Commitment. We've been on a series called Commitment. Now, can we do some real talk? Yeah. It's up to you. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. I think I started. Oh, yeah. You started. <laughs> Make make them on the, make sure that they hear this on the tape. Um, <laughs> we've been talking about Can shut this down being committed down. to the things that God has PC called us to. Okay. We we have to understand that down. when we neglect um, our I'm obligations leaving. and calling in the church, have to go. Okay. eventually right. or ultimately <laughs> it can uh, carry over to our relationship with Christ. Because if you start with small things and, and you don't correct the small things, then they grow into big things. Yes. And we need to uh, get to a place where we're committed to our callings and obligations in the church. Now, I've been using this Look church as an example because Look I don't know nothing in. about nobody else's church. Push that in. And I've been saying that we need to make sure there's, there's that no we're volume. fulfilling our obligations as members of this church. Even if you're not a leader or in a leadership position, I've stated that your presence is still needed here because God has called you to be part of this church, then you need to be here. Now, if you, right. now, if you have another church that you attend, you need to, wherever God has called you, right. you need to make sure that you're fulfilling your obligations there. Amen. 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 Every person in the in a ministry that God has called you to a ministry, He's given you a gift for that ministry, and your gift is to help that ministry or the vision of that ministry to go forth. But if you are not here, then you can't use your gift. Correct? Amen. I said earlier this is not an amen sermon. I may even get people rolling their eyes at me. That's okay. I can take all that. <laughs> But it's the truth that'll make us free. Amen. Now, in this series, we've already talked about how uh, being committed yeah. to our being committed should be an attribute of a belief, a characteristic of ours. When people call your name, they should know that you are faithful. They should know that you are committed. They should know that they can depend on you. Okay, when your name is mentioned anywhere. And in this series, we talked about that Jesus requires commitment for discipleship. If we're going to be disciples of Jesus, and that's what a Christian is, a believer should be a disciple of Jesus. And a disciple is a follower of a teacher. Okay? If we are going to be a disciple of Jesus, then it requires commitment. We also talked about following him requires sacrifice. That means that sometimes... To fulfill our obligations, we need, we may have to make sacrifices. You may have to give up your, your, your leisure time. You may have to give up your television time. You may have to give up your uh, time of, of, of hanging out with somebody, you know, to fulfill your obligations. Now, I know that there are times when we have to do other things. But we got to make God's callings and God's obligation that he's given us priority. We have to make this just as important as our job. I know people that would take off from church to rest for work. But they won't take off from work. And I'm not encouraging this. <laughs> don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. They won't take off from work to go to church. And my point is, that's showing me that you deem, uh, you, you put your job above your church going. Whatever is, Brother Chuck has always told him this, whatever is valuable to us, we will find time to do it. We need to find time to come to church and fulfill our obligations. We live it, listen, I believe in my heart that we're living in the last days. Jesus is on his way back. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to step it up. And as he steps it up, we need to step it up. That's right. The purpose of coming to church is to learn how to live a victorious life here on earth. Okay? It ain't just, you know, like I see some people when they come to church, they want you to roll the red carpet out for them because they think they're doing God a favor. <laughs> but let me tell you, God wrote the Bible. He created.
created us. We're not doing him a favor. He's really, it's a privilege to be able to go to church. Amen. Some countries, they can't even go. Some countries, they can't even have a Bible. We can walk down the street and read our Bible. Amen. We are free. So it's a privilege, and we need to take advantage of that privilege and learn so that we can grow in our relationship with Christ and walk victoriously here on earth. On earth. God, Jesus has freed us from the curse. Okay, I hear people say that all the time. I'm not under the curse. The curse is no, has no effect in my life. But they're living, if you look at their lives, it's, it's, it's a cursed life. See, if you are free from the curse, then sickness and, 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 and poverty shouldn't be dominating your life. It, it may start out doing that, but you should be coming out of that. Because Jesus has freed us from that. So if we're still battling and dealing with these things, then we still need to learn, is what I'm trying to tell you. You haven't arrived yet. Some people think they have arrived and they don't want to hear a sermon over again. Oh, I heard that sermon before and I don't need to hear that. Brother Chuck been teaching on belief for six years. I don't need to hear that. Well, you need to keep hearing it for six more years. You're in a dangerous place when you think you don't need to hear something over and over again. It's, 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 it's funny to me how we uh, watch reruns on movies, <laughs> programs. If you got a program, you're like, you sit two or three hours and, and watch that program, but don't let Brother Chuck go over hours. Oh, no. People, you see people doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, they're going to go and talk to him a little bit. They're going to say, now, you know, we want to make sure that we, our new people don't get ran off, so we need to cut our sermons a little bit. <laughs> but do, do you go to that movie theater and, and go back there behind the curtain and tell the guy, say, look, this movie is too long. <laughs> <laughs> you need to cut this a little bit, you know what I mean? You're going to run people off. Matter of fact, if they cut it off, you're going to get mad because you say, look, I spent $6. I want to see every part of this movie. Right. You know? You, know, you hear what I'm saying? See, we have to get to a place where this is, this is more important than anything else in our life. So this is where your victory is at. This is where we learn to live in the mission field out there. All right, you hear what I'm saying? But to do that, we have to fulfill our commitment. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, we last, we, we, we've also talked about, we, we started talking about uh, principles that can help us stay committed. And the first principle that we talked about was that we need to become established in a local church family, okay? We use the term local because this is sometimes can be a factor in you attending that church on a regular basis. Because I've, I've been there. One church that Flo and I used to go to was 50 miles one way. And we were ushers. So we had to be there at 6 in the morning. So we had to get up real early. But it still limited us. Because a lot of times I didn't feel like driving that, 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 that distance and I wouldn't get involved in a lot of things that I could have been involved in because of the distance. You understand? But a local church, if it's close, then you can get involved. Even if you don't have a vehicle, you can catch a bus. Or, in some instances, you can even walk the church. Heaven forbid. But <laughs> you can even walk the church. You know? <coughs> so you need to get established in a local church that's teaching the uncompromised Word of God. Not just a church that, that has the name church on it, but that's teaching you the uncompromised Word of God. So that's where your victory is going to come. Teaching you the whole Bible is what I'm saying. Okay? Because it will strengthen us to stay committed. All right. Y'all still with me? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Last week we started talking principle number two was that we're, we're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That don't mean that you are not to talk to them. You, you, that, that don't mean you can't go out and, uh, and, and spend time with them. What that means is you are not to get in a binding relationship. Because the word fellowship in the Bible comes from a Greek word, koinonia. And it means to share like, like things. You know, like when you share with somebody, you, you're sharing things that y'all have in common. Where we as Christians... There is nothing in common that we have with unbelievers. I gave an example by, and I'm not pleased, don't misunderstand this. We have to love.